hello remember to subscribe and share this video leave your comments uh, this is um, science paper 1 uh, 2020 section C I did uh, section A and B some time back but I realized I never updated you with uh, section um, C so this is science 1 2020 which is physics section C reads answer any two questions from this section in the separate answer book like provided C1. Below is the velocity time graph representing motion of a motorcycle traveling along a straight line. This is our graph with the title, labeled axis, okay, labeled axis. And then, of course, from the labels, you can tell the divisions what they mean. This is velocity against time. So we get the first question. Our first question reads Describe the motion of the motorcycle between the points. Uh, 1 OP 2 PQ and 3 QR okay so I described the mo the motion of the motorcycle before I describe allow me to just take a look at the graph again that's our graph okay that's our graph maximum velocity reached is 40 maximum time is 12 seconds uh, this can be divided into three shapes you know this is our graph in short uh, the answers which I have are here my motion is that uh, from OP, the motorcycle was accelerating, PQ, it was constant velocity, and then QR, it was decelerating. So I come back to the graph. This, the, gra the gradient of a velocity time graph is, or maybe represents acceleration. So this motorcycle was accelerating because the velocity was going up, then velocity became constant. Therefore, there was no change in velocity, meaning that acceleration was zero. Sorry about that. I'm um, seated where there's wind uh, through the window. So uh, this part here, there's deceleration. So that's the, uh, the, the, the motion of the motorcycle. Um, next question. What was the maximum speed of the motorcycle? The maximum speed of the motorcycle was 40 meters per second. Um, I go back to the question. Uh, how long did it take the motorcycle to retard to rest? How long did it take the motorcycle to retard to rest or to slow down? Retardation began at this point here and ended here. So you have to drop down from here. You have to come down and see what time it is. Then you simply measure your time. For my answers, my answer for C was um, 5 seconds. 5 seconds. Maximum velocity, 40 meters per second squared per second. Then uh, time of deceleration was 5 seconds. Question D. Calculate the total distance traveled by the motorcycle. Calculate the total distance traveled by the motorcycle. I can easily, as I said earlier on, divide this into three shapes and find the area under this graph. The area under a velocity time graph represents distance covered by that object. So uh, that's my solution right there. There are three shapes. So my first triangle, I'm finding the area under my first triangle, then the rectangle, then the third triangle. So my first triangle, my answer was skisty. Second triangle it was one skisty. Third triangle is hundred. Okay, hundred. And my total distance traveled is 320. 320 meters. Um, I repeat, look at that shape right there, the shape of the graph. It can be divided into three shapes. The first one is a triangle which ends here. You bring it down. This becomes your base. Then this becomes your height, 40. Then you cut also from here, bring it down. The middle part becomes a rectangle. Then the last part becomes a triangle. Find the area under the area of those three shapes and uh, you have found the distance. Our third question is to calculate the average velocity uh, for the motion. My average velocity for the motion is... 320 which is our total distance calculated um, over 12 which is the total time taken by the, the motorcycle it comes out as 26.67 meters per second and um, as you can see the total time taken is um, 12 okay so we'll get to the next question question 2 Elena carried out Hooke's law experiment and obtained the following results these were the results okay uh, 11 length uh, when there's no load mass in kg when there's no load the length of the spring is 11 when you add a 0 0.02 kilogram load okay this load is in mass uh, the extension is by 1.1 because it's this is when there's no any extension this is the length of the of the of the spring the difference between the length of the spring and the final measure measure 
or reading after the spring is loaded is called the extension. So our first our first question here is copy and complete the table by finding the values of applied force n and extension are produced. So I've instead written just here when there is no load, the force applied is zero because there's no load and therefore the extension is zero. The length of the spring remains at eleven. Uh, in other words, I'm converting this to Newton. This is kg, kilograms, mass. So I'm converting all these values, all of these to Newtons and then placing them here because that's the force. That would be the weight of these masses here. Uh, this is 1.0, okay, not 4. This looks like 4, but it's 1.0. Then extension uh, in millimeters, I'm subtracting 12 minus 11, that's extension. 13 minus 11, that's extension. 14, this is my final reading. Then my initial was already 11, so I subtract to find the extension. So this is my extension here. Number B, plot a graph of applied force against extension. Therefore, force on the on the on the y axis and then extension on the x axis. I have the graph. Let's look at the graph. Uh, that's my graph there my title is force against extension graph that's my title my axes are well labeled there that's force okay in newtons and then i have my my extension in millimeters okay so uh this graph is force against extension therefore the values these values i was finding i need to plot a graph of the using these same values so if you make a mistake here then your graph will be messed up so I simply look for a suitable um, scale on my y-axis. I, I come, I came up with this. Okay, hopefully it's visible from that far. So this is my graph here. I began first of all by plotting one comma zero point two newtons. It's not really one. It is one point one actually. One point one comma zero point two. Then. Um, 2.2 comma 0.4 the graph goes on and on according to this so this is 1.1 comma 0.2 2.2 comma 0.4 um 3.3 comma 0.6 4.4 comma 0.8 then 5.5 comma 1 that's what this graph is made of then i drew my best fit line along this graph my first question is um, my, my, my next question is uh, from the graph determine the spring constant formula for spring constant is here constant is equals to force over extension therefore uh, the gradient of this line is equal to the spring constant okay spring constant therefore gradient is equal to change in y over change in x so i simply get two coordinates i think you know how to calculate gradient over uh, uh, change in y over change in x so i began counting from here up to my maximum point there Okay, so um, this is uh, y, I'll say y1 minus y. So this is my y1 here, then minus y2. Okay, I'll say minus y2. Then below here, the change in x, I'll say 5.5, which is x1, minus x2, which is 1.1. So it doesn't matter if you swap them. Okay, well, all we're looking for is the, the gradient. So my values are bringing me to 0 0.18. And since my gradient is equal to this, this is the value of my spring constant as well. The spring constant is a value that tells you how firm or, or, or soft a spring is. Okay, so the next question here reads, um, from the graph, determine the spring constant. So D, D1, did the spring reach its elastic limit? Uh, my answer would be no. Look at these values here. There is this direct proportion. There is this direct direct change according to Hooke's law. Okay, um, the, the extension is directly proportional to the force uh, causing it, provided the extension limit is not exceeded. So when you look at these values here, there is um, there is consistency. Okay, here the change is by 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. The change is by 2, and even here the change is consistent. So the spring didn't reach its ex, um, ex, ex, elastic limit. If it goes beyond the elastic limit, it gets damaged. Number two, explain your answer in D1 above. I think I've, I've actually explained that the, 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 there is direct proportionality between the values of extension and force applied. Okay, so we get to the next question. Okay, so our last question in this paper reads um, Figure C, C3.1 is a chart showing some components of the electromagnetic spectrum A, A1, use the list below to copy and complete the electromagnetic spectrum chart 
radio waves x-rays uv gamma ir and red light so fit get these and excuse me sorry about that fit them in this table here so gamma of course has got the highest wavelength then x-rays then uv then blue then green then red then ir then microwaves then radio how did i know this you look at the just the given blue then here there is microwave already you not you should you are supposed to know the visible spectrum even if the others are not given here you just have to know how they are they are in terms of um, the the the, the, the the frequency and also the wavelength you have to know the the spectrum and so you easily know which one among these has got the highest frequency gamma so gamma should be in the in the in the last box there so you fit all of these in these boxes and then the next question is name the component of the spectrum uh, name the component of the spectrum that has the longest wavelength radio radio has got the longest wavelength number two uh, is emitted by hot bodies infrared is emitted by hot bodies number c microwaves have the frequency of this much and velocity of this much which is the speed of light one calculate the wavelength of microwaves two state two practical uses of microwaves let's look at those answers so here i simply use the wave formula to calculate the wavelength of microwaves and i do my mathematics it comes out as 5.98 exponential minus 3 meters then uses of microwaves cooking and communication cooking and communication i end here for this paper and um i think i've already posted the other two videos for the section for section a and section b um i'll see you in the next video bye bye and yeah have a good day